the next question is, how can I tell if these ideas are any different from other ideas I encounter? Well, that's an excellent question. And it's an excellent question because I really can't answer it. How can you tell? And this is one of the things that we like to do. And this is why studying something from a traditional point of view leads right into this so beautifully. Because from a traditional point of view, we would ask someone else, well, how can I tell if these ideas are any different from other ideas that I encounter? Well, traditionally then, the teacher would then tell you, well, you can tell that these ideas are different from other ideas that you've encountered because these ideas are the right ideas and those ideas are the wrong ideas. These ideas lead to whatever it is that they're selling, whatever piece of blue sky is being sold, uh, the blue sky special for the day. In the restaurants, it's the blue plate special. At Kmart, it's the blue light special. And in religious circles, it's the blue sky special. Whatever piece of blue sky they happen to be selling today, then that's how you can tell that these ideas are the right ideas because they fit into the blue sky puzzle here. And I'm not going to tell you that because you're the one who has to be able to discern how these ideas are different. And what separates this teaching and this system from all of the other systems that you know about and that you have practiced and you've studied and you've looked at or you've heard about is that this system doesn't ask you to believe anything. This system, this system doesn't ask you to believe that the ideas that I'm telling you are better ideas than any other ideas that anybody else is saying. What this system says is, look, don't believe any of this. This is all hogwash. This is all mind stuff until the moment that you can start to apply it in your own personal experience. So if this system says something about there are really two of you. There's an outside you that was acquired by your entering into life, by your interaction with life. So as you did that, you began to acquire things. And these things that you acquired started to build into this structure. And this structure surrounded you like a wall. And this structure is what psychology calls personality. What this system calls that personality is false personality because it surrounded you. It's not really who you are. It's what you have acquired by interacting with people in life, by what you have learned, by what you have imitated, by what you've heard, by what you've seen, by how you've reacted to those things, by how other people have reacted to those things, how they reacted to you reacting to those things. And so all of these things were burned into you, as it were. These impressions were burned into you, and they started to become crystallized, solidified, until you started to develop this personality. And this personality is who people think you are. What's worse is this personality is who you think you are. And once we accept that this personality is who I am, then whatever changes go on in the personality, we're dragged around by those. It's like we're, we're like a dog on a leash. And the personality is pulling and jerking us everywhere it goes. And the personality changes. You have a personality with your husband, you have a personality with your wife, you have a personality with your kids, you have a personality with your boss, you have your per your, a personality with other people at school, you have all these different personalities according to the different hats you wear in life. Now, we say I to all of them, so we say, well, that's all my personality, there's just many facets of it. But the problem is, is that we're saying I to whatever facet happens to be dominant at the moment. But then there are other facets of our personality that contradict that entirely. And so we end up with these walls in between different facets so that they start to become actually so fragmented that we don't know who we are and what we're doing. We say we're going to do something and then we can't do it. We say we want something and then when it comes to actually getting it, we don't have the drive to get it. We say we don't want to do something. Well, you know, I don't really want to weigh 400 pounds. Well, why do you suppose I weigh 400 pounds? And after we get through all the lies of, well, I, I, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a thyroid problem, or, well, um, it's, it's a, I just metabolize differently than other people. I eat a peanut and I look like an elephant, you know, or, or you know, all the lies. When the bottom line is, it's a, it's a scientific fact. It's about calories. It's about fuel. When your body has more fuel than you can burn, it stores it. And what that storing of those of that fuel is called is fat. And so we store it all. And then we end up carrying it around with us. And then, but we like to eat. Even though we don't need the fuel, we like to eat. So this part of our personality developed this, I want to eat. Because it makes me feel good. Because inside I get this hollow spot and I don't feel good. 
But when I eat, it's very comforting. I feel very happy then. And all the time that I'm eating, I'm feeling happy. So I eat all the time. And that makes sense, doesn't it? We should all be happy, right? And there you have it. What was the question? Where did I go? <laughs> so these ideas are different in that I'm not asking you to believe them. I'm asking you to apply them. I'm asking you to try this for yourself. See for yourself that this isn't true. Stop for a moment and look at yourself and see if it isn't true that there are different eyes in you that really are in opposition to the other eyes, that you can't do the things you always say you can do and you always want to do, that you do imagine that you're doing things. You start off with a goal. Write down your goal specifically, literally. Be very exact about it and then try to do it and then see how far off you are and then see that what your mind does is it says, oh, well, I did it. I did it. Well, it's not exactly like that, but it's a lot like that. Well, it may not be anything like that, but, but my mind thinks it's like that. And so if you actually apply these ideas, they may not be different than any other ideas, except that here we're talking about applying them. And applying them will make all the difference, because then it makes the idea not just something you heard from me or something you heard from someone else, but something that's real for you, that's true for you, and it starts to gain power for you, and you start to draw force from above for yourself, force that can help you to live the kind of a life that you would rather have instead of the kind of life that you have. Does that answer your question?